coming in clutch today with a um, clutch. That pun was way too obvious. That's right, it's raining, so no point in riding. Might as well get into modding. So we're back with the Benelli on the clutch. We're gonna replace the clutch plates and the springs. I've actually had these parts laying around for quite a while, for probably the better part of a year. I got them pretty early on. I knew I wanted to upgrade the clutch for a long time, but for a while I wanted to put some mileage on the original stuff, get an idea of how it engages, how the clutch feels right now in stock form. And now the engine has just over 1500 miles on it so it's pretty well established how it feels right now and I think it would be a good idea to put in some more performance oriented stuff something to give it a little bit more grab a little bit more engagement and some stiffer springs and some new plates while we're in there is gonna take care of that so let's take a look at some of the parts we're gonna throw in and here you have it this is what we're putting in pretty simple just the six disc clutch kit and the springs these are both from sex machine racing or SMR if you choose to be PG so we got a six disc wet clutch kit so it's got the friction plates and the steel plates and we have a set of springs here these are 30 percent firmer than stock now i don't know if they have different stiffnesses nowadays as i said earlier i got these about a year ago so at the time at least these were the only ones that were available besides OEM. We also have a gasket here, the clutch cover gasket. I don't know that we're actually gonna use this if I'm honest. I think we can probably get away with using the OEM clutch cover gasket, provided that we pull it off and everything looks fine. We don't rip it, tear it, damage it in any way. It's not leaking right now, so it's perfectly fine. And I don't see why we shouldn't be able to reuse that if it's still working just fine. It only has 1500 miles, but if for some reason we rip it, tear it, or it does look worse than I thought, we have this so we can cover it. So what we gotta do now is drain the oil for two reasons. Number one, this clutch cover, when we pull it off, there's a bunch of oil behind that. It's gonna come out anyway, so we gotta catch it. And number two, we have to lubricate these plates because these are not by any means lubricated right now. And if we put them in dry, we can damage it when we fire it up for the first time. So what we gotta do is pre-soak these more or less. And the easiest way to do that is just pull these out of the packaging and I'm gonna throw it into the drain pan before we drain the oil. And so that way, while we drain the oil, the old oil will act as a lubricant and cover these up and get them nice and pre-soaked. Let them sit in there for about an hour or two at the least, just to make sure that everything's nice and lubricated when we put everything back in. So let's throw a drain pan under there, put these in it, and get started with at least an oil change. Got our 13 mil. Let's get this cracked. There we go. We'll let these soak. Looks like it's covering them up nicely. And we can get started on the other side, pull the clutch cover off. All right, now we're on to the clutch cover. Made some headway here, got everything loosened up. I actually went ahead and replaced the oil filter right here. Not that we need to right now, but because I'm changing the oil, might as well change the filter. But let's take a pause here for a moment to talk about a couple of things. There's a lot of bolts around this entire thing that will need to be loosened and pulled out so that we can pull the whole thing off. But before that, there's a couple of things we need to keep an eye on. So the clutch cable right here. So it attaches to this arm here to engage the clutch. Now this needs to be disconnected. Easiest way to do this I found was to take apart this, the bracket. So there's two bolts here that hold not only the clutch cover, but this bracket right here to hold the clutch cable. And so just loosening these two, it gives you plenty of play that you can push forward, pushing on against this at the same time that this little stopper here can get out really, really easily. So that's the easiest way to do it I've found and probably will be just as easy in the reverse way. And that way we don't have to worry about adjusting this anymore it's perfectly fine the way it is the other thing I want to point out is this this is one of the oil return lines and this is actually connected to the clutch cover and not the engine case so normally I would say crack this loose and pull it off so that way we can get the whole thing 
but this has two crush washers here that will need to be replaced if you're loosening this. Now, I don't have them, and so I don't want to, quite frankly, pull this off. I think we can get away with just unbolting everything else, leaving this here, and we can pull this and just move it off to the side at least. That way this is still connected. So now that we gotten all these loosened, all these little eight millimeter bolts all the way around, we'll finally take them all the way out and pull this whole clutch cover off, see what we're working with. Okay, so these are not the same size, all the bolts that go all the way around. So the two with the clutch cable, it looks like is a little bit longer. So I'm gonna put these kind of in a circular pattern in the way that I pulled them off. So that way I know exactly which bolt goes where when I put it back on. There's also a little plate right here to push the clutch in and out from that arm. So we wanna make sure that that's still in there. And we also wanna make sure it's still in there when we put it back because otherwise it won't work. Ask me how I know. All right, so here's what we're working with. Now that we got the clutch cover up and out of the way, this is the main enchilada. In here is the clutch plates, the friction plates and the steel plates, kind of one after another. And then right behind these four bolts here, a spring behind each one. So what we gotta do first is loosen these up. Shouldn't be too hard, they're not that tight, but they do have some tension. So we'll make sure to reverse these out nice and evenly. And then we can pull those out, get the springs out, and then we'll pull this basket, this front plate behind us off so that we can pull out the individual friction and steel plates. And then we'll be able to start reversing the process and putting the new stuff in. Nice. There's a washer right here. I should put that back in there. Everything's lined up nice and sandwiched together there. We got the six now instead of the five. So we'll get these little splines lined up and put it back in. We do have to make sure that this thing lines up with the splines on this. This is always the annoying part. There we go. Now we got the new springs in, and so we're gonna put the clutch plate back on and feed the four bolts through on each side. And we're just gonna go crisscross applesauce again and just kind of push it in nice and easy. Time-lapse time. We got this all wrapped up. Now all we gotta do is just put the clutch basket back on. As I said before, we gotta make sure that this plunger is still in place because otherwise then we do all this for nothing. And then we'll have to pull all this out. And who wants to do that? we tighten that down let's just that is loose why is that loose why are you loose okay so crisis averted so when I first put this on I wanted to check the clutch play here and just kind of uh, moving my finger on the clutch lever up there to see if uh, everything felt okay at least there but when I first did that it was completely dead there was no feeling whatsoever in the lever it was like it wasn't even attached and so pulled everything off just to double check making sure that the plunger was still there that the clutch basket was all put in the right orientation that there was no washers or spacers or anything like that missing everything was good and put this back on and actually tightened everything down and i think that's what did it so pushing the clutch cover all the way in by tightening all these bolts then it started to give me some resistance that i was expecting so when i pull in the clutch now that everything is tightened down you don't feel anything for the first half and then it starts to engage there's too much slop in the cable right now um, so this will have to be adjusted for sure but 
Let's wrap everything up down here first. Gotta make sure there's oil in there. Don't wanna forget that. So we'll fill this up with oil real quick. Make some rough adjustments up here to get enough of the play and then we'll actually fire up the bike. Sounds like it works. Feels like it works. Nothing left to do now except for ride it on the street. Get it through the gears. But seeing how it's still raining outside, leave that for another day. It's like a bike meet here. Look at that. Whole Z125 and some kind of 300 scooter. Just grabbing a couple of quick items for a project I'm working on this weekend, but sun is out. Actually pretty hot. Weather's changing like crazy this week, but gives us a chance to finally feel how the, uh, the old clutch is doing here. I forgot to put this little guy back. Ooh, that's a snappy clutch. Once we get on this road, we'll roll through the gears, but at least in the quick ride, just, you know, from the house here and then around in the parking lot, just kind of going from a stop to first gear rolling on. It does have an initial grab, like that grab feels a lot more prominent, not as squishy as the OEM stuff. I'm trying to remember on the way over here, did I actually feel that much of a difference though when I'm going through the gears? But, well, I guess we'll find out right now. Oh yeah, there it is. That's pretty snappy. Pretty good. When you're really snappy with the throttle, you feel it. But otherwise, if you're just kind of riding around like normal, not aggressively, there's not much of a difference there. I think it also has to do with a couple of things. Number one, these are only 30% springs, not the uh, 50 or 60%, I can't remember, that I'm used to with the Grom. So that one, the Grom definitely it feels more aggressive, but it's got, you know, double the stiffness or double the increase at least. Also, the Grom has six springs, whereas this one only has four. So there's less spring tension there in total. So with that and a lower percentage, you're not gonna see as much of an impact here than you would with a Grom that has six and you're going 50, 60%. That's a lot more impactful in that one. Yes, it's very much an on-off switch. This one, I still, it still feels pretty normal, but if you're really aggressive with it or just kind of in a parking lot going from stop start, standstill kind of stuff, you really do feel that clutch engagement and it feels really nice. I could see this really helping out if you were to try to get into like wheelies or something, but I am not a stunter. <laughs> So I'm not gonna be able to test that, but take my word for it. This is pretty good now time to end the video before I get sick Bye